Today, we're answering one of the most horrifying, beautiful, and completely disorienting questions in astrophysics. What happens if you fall into a black hole? Would you be stretched like spaghetti, survive time travel, or witness the end of the universe? Let's find out and prepare for some serious existential confusion. Before we fall into one, we need to understand what a black hole actually is. And to do that, we have to unlearn what we think we know about space, time, and even reality. Space and time aren't rigid. They're flexible, like a trampoline. Massive objects like stars or planets bend the fabric of space-time. That's how gravity works. The more massive the object, the deeper the bend. Now, take something so massive, so dense, that it rips a hole in that fabric. That's a black hole. When a giant star many times more massive than our sun collapses at the end of its life, it doesn't go quietly. It collapses inward under its own gravity. No explosion. No final gasp. Just a dramatic, silent implosion. What's left is a point with infinite density and zero volume. A place where the laws of physics take one look and say, nope. So, what makes a black hole so terrifying? It's not the singularity itself, it's the event horizon. This is the ultimate cosmic boundary. Get too close, and you're trapped forever. Even light, the fastest thing in the universe, can't escape it. Imagine a sphere around the black hole. Cross that invisible shell, and you've entered a realm where all paths now matter how hard you try to resist lead to the center. Even if you travel at the speed of light, there's no, no way out. Time itself slows down near the event horizon. If you hovered just outside it, you'd see the universe speed up like a fast-forwarded movie. Meanwhile, someone watching you from far away would see you slow down until you seem to freeze in place. But if you dared to cross that boundary, buckle up. Let's imagine you're falling into a stellar mass black hole just a few dozen kilometers across, but with the mass of 10 suns. At first, nothing much changes. You float through space, peacefully drifting toward your doom. But then your toes feel something. They're being pulled harder than your head. This is called spaghettification. And no, it's not delicious. The difference in gravitational pull across your body becomes so extreme that you're stretched like a noodle. Your atoms unravel. You become a long, thin stream of plasma. Basically a human spaghetti strand. And then splat. You hit the singularity and vanish forever. But that's only true for smaller black holes. Bigger ones, the supermassive ones at the center of galaxies might, let you survive longer. How long? Well, let's just say. Long enough to really regret your choices. At the center lies the singularity and infinitely dense point, a place where space-time is twisted beyond recognition, where time and space swap rolls, where moving forward means moving toward the center, and there's no way to stop it. Inside the event horizon, you can't turn around, you can't go sideways. Every direction leads you inward. And the scariest part? Physics can't describe what happens there. It's like dividing by zero. The universe throws up its hands and says, you're on your own. Everything that falls in becomes part of the singularity. No memory. No identity. Just mass. Black holes don't care who you were. At this point, you might be wondering, if black holes crush everything into oblivion, do they remember any of it? Short answer? Nope. Black holes are the ultimate minimalists. No matter what falls INA piano, a planet, a politician, it's all the same to the black hole. It forgets everything except three things. Mass, spin, electric charge. That's it. This idea is so strange, it has a name. The no-hair theorem. Because black holes have no distinguishing features. No hair to grab onto. Every black hole, stripped of its complexity, becomes basically the same. If we could line up all the singularities in the universe in some cosmic museum, they'd be identical. Like electrons. Just more dramatic. But that simplicity hides a huge problem. Here's the real kicker. Our best scientific theories just stop working at the singularity. Einstein's general relativity works great for planets and galaxies. Quantum mechanics rules the world of atoms and particles. 
but when you try to use both on a singularity, it's like trying to divide by zero while solving a Rubik's cube blindfolded. Nothing makes sense. Space-time becomes infinitely curved. Density becomes infinite. Everything that was once predictable becomes nonsense. Some physicists believe singularities don't even exist at, at least not the way we think. They might be placeholders for something deeper we haven't figured out yet. We need a new theory. A theory of everything that can merge gravity and quantum physics. So until then, the singularity remains the universe's ultimate 404, reality not found. Okay, so everything we just said? There's a catch. It only applies to non-spinning black holes. Why? Because that math is easier. But in reality, every black hole spins. They're born from dying stars, massive, fast-spinning monsters, and they keep that rotation. Most black holes spin at up to 90% the speed of light. Let that sink in. This adds a new twist literally. Instead of a point-like singularity, the center becomes a ring, a ringularity. As the black hole spins, it drags space-time around with it. This creates a region called the Ergosphira cosmic whirlpool you can't escape. Even light is pulled into orbit. Try to stay still here? Nope. Not happening. The fabric of the universe itself is being twisted into a cosmic tornado. And just when you thought black holes couldn't get any weirder, let's fast forward. Way past your fall. Way past the heat death of the universe. What happens to black holes in the end? Surprisingly, they die too. Enter Hawking radiation. In quantum physics, space isn't empty, it's teeming with energy. Virtual particles constantly pop in and out of existence. Usually, they annihilate each other instantly. But near the event horizon, one particle might fall in while the other escapes. The escapee becomes Hawking radiation, and it steals energy from the black hole. Over time, a ridiculously long time, the black hole shrinks and eventually evaporates. A black hole the size of our sun would take 10 to the power 67 years to vanish. That's a 10 followed by 67 zeros. And most black holes are far bigger. The supermassive ones at the center of galaxies? Their lifetimes are estimated at 10 to the power 100 years. That's longer than the current age of the universe times a billion billion billion. You get the point. When the last black hole dies, all that remains is nothing. Just a cold, empty, silent universe. Will we ever truly understand black holes? Maybe. Maybe not. We can observe their effects. We can model their behavior. But when it comes to the Caretha singularity hour, best theories just don't cut it. And yet that's not a failure. It's a beginning. It means there's more to discover, more to figure out, more to imagine. Science isn't about having all the answers. It's about asking better questions.